Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for TheMediaSpeaks.com. Behind me, paid for by your donations at The Correct Views at Hotmail.com, The Fact Cam. Why do I call it The Fact Cam? Because there seems to always be people that will question whether or not I actually give any sources or not. So behind me is the fact cam. It will give you, you will see exactly what I'm reading. You will see all my sources. So maybe you're saying I'm looking at the long-haired guy. Long-haired guy. Why would I say that? Make sure you stay tuned. Um, You're looking at the long-haired guy and you're thinking, why the hell should I listen to him for? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, I do know what I'm talking about. So you're going to have to hate me for another reason. And there's a whole bunch of reasons. So, I mean, you can pile them on. It's, I'm, I'm taking donations here of hatred. But you cannot say that I'm making things up because all of my facts are, in fact, always now on the fact cam. Friends, uh, prisonplanet.com. It's actually, that's where I found it, but it's Washington's blog. U.S. rejected offers by Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and Syria to surrender and proceeded to wage war. Um, You know, I voted libertarian almost every election of my life, and I jumped ship because I hated Bednarik. And I have regretted that decision ever since. Because, do you realize... And again, and this is where I'm going to go into a little bit more of actual commentary than I think um, a lot of people are used to. But welcome aboard. I hope that's why you're watching. Um, in the Bible, it warns of uh, the the horse, the final horses, as uh, green, black, red, and white. Well, that would be the primary, actually the only four colors found on every flag of the nations that I just told you to. You can also add eight others to it. So some people consider that to be the four horses. For those of you that don't follow that, uh, then perhaps that's you don't know what I'm talking about, which is fine. But these nations would not be as powerful and as threatening to any of us if they had been intelligent enough to realize that what they were doing was building an army against us. And that would be ISIS, of course. And um, do you realize that Afghanistan was going to hand over bin Laden before we went in? They'd never handed over anyone before without absolute proof that they were involved, but they were willing to do it, and we invaded anyway. Did you know that? Because I did not. Iraq, I, I still, I still believe that there, and I'll tell you why. Um, I don't know if there was a lot of Al-Qaeda in Iraq before we went in, but Musab al-Zakawi, the guy that beheaded Daniel Pearl, was allowed safe haven in Iraq before we got there, and he was affiliated with Al-Qaeda. However... Saddam was going to surrender. All he wanted was to make sure he didn't die, and he wanted uh, basic protection, like you would give uh, a president, like Bill Clinton has, for instance. He wanted protected, and he was going to go away. We invaded. How about Gaddafi? Muammar Gaddafi got his butt kicked by Ronald Reagan, for better or for worse, And um, after that, guess what? He wasn't a problem. In some ways, he was an asset. He was willing to step down. We invaded Libya, and it led to uh, everything we know now that has been the main rise of ISIS. How about President Assad? I don't normally praise Putin. I really don't like Putin very much. Regular listeners know this, but I'm going to be fair, and I'm going to do nothing but talk about Putin's good points such as the fact that he believes, uh, saying, uh, if you believe all religions are equal, if you believe that worshipping uh, the devil is the same as worshipping God, then you are, in fact, uh, leading to the fall of civilization and normalcy and decency as we know it. It's Vladimir Putin that believes that. That's good. Again, I'm, I'm going to stay away from all of my Putin criticisms. All my regular listeners are having a heart attack right now. We're not going to attack Putin. We're going to talk about what he does right. Putin was willing to get the president of Syria, Assad, to step down. Instead, 
this has happened. Now, you can blame Bush, you can blame Obama, you can blame whatever, but what if you didn't vote for any of the major political parties? What if you didn't this year? What if you really didn't do that? Because otherwise, I'm telling you, what Obama has done in Libya is what Bush did in Iraq. Listen to this. The Daily Mail reported last year that a self-selected group of former top military officers, CIA insiders, and think tankers declared Tuesday in Washington that a seven-month review of the deadly 2012 terrorist attack has determined that Gaddafi ordered it to advocate as leader of Libya. Excuse me. He was willing to step down. We didn't need to go in there. And again, this is what has led to ISIS. This is what has led to the mi migrant problem that we're seeing now. Because we didn't let these people just surrender after we asked them to. So maybe we are going after their pipeline. Maybe we are going after their oil. Maybe your tax dollars and my tax dollars are going to fund really vile, vile people. We attack somebody after they surrendered? Who does that? This is what we're paying for, really? Gaddafi wasn't a good guy, but he was being marginalized. Retired Admiral Chuck Kubrick recalled, Gaddafi actually offered to advocate, that means leave for you Kesha fans, shortly after the beginning of 2011, during the rebellion. But the U.S. ignored his calls for a truce, the, vision, the commission wrote, ultimately backing the horse that would later help kill the U.S. ambassador. Kubrick said that the effort at truce talks fell apart when the White House declined to let the Pentagon pursue it seriously. We had a leader who had won the Nobel Peace Prize, that would be Obama, but he was unwilling to give peace a chance for just 72 hours. Washington Times, another, another source, wrote in January, I have been contacted by an intermediary in Libya who has indicated that President Muammar Gaddafi is willing to negotiate an end to the conflict under conditions that would seem to favor admission policy, according to Dennis Kucinich, and he wrote this in August, 20, August 24th. Mrs. Clinton ordered a general within the Pentagon to refuse to take a call with Gaddafi's son Saif and other high-level members within the regime to help negotiate a resolution, the secret recordings reveal. Clinton, Mrs. Clinton, who should never be anywhere near the White House, she should not be allowed to scoop up dog crap off of the White House lawn. She went in and killed Gaddafi. Why? Again, at 86, we went over there, we, we bombed his palaces for what he did. Uh, we killed his daughter. And peace had long been made. Gaddafi was not being a problem. I remember that time distinctly. I was young and just getting into a lot of this. I'm telling you, this is evil. Everything I am getting from the State Department is that they do not care about being part of this. Secretary Clinton does not want to negotiate at all. No, she just wants to bomb. So why don't we elect her to president? It said Gaddafi came back and said he was willing to step down and permit a transition government. But he had two conditions. First was to ensure that there was a military that would be left over in Libya to take care of Al-Qaeda. Who wants Al-Qaeda running loose in the country they loved when they stepped down? That's reasonable. Secondly, he wanted to have the sanctions against him and his family and those loyal to him lifted in free passage. At that point in time, everybody thought that that was reasonable, but not the State Department. It wasn't enough to get him to step out of power, they wanted him dead. General Ham was ordered to stand down two days later. Do you think that's kind of weird? Similarly, Saddam Hussein, and again, I hated Saddam Hussein. He needed, in many, he needed to step down. I'm sorry, he needed to step down. Now, do I think it was America's policies to force him to do so? No. But I would be interested in not doing business with him till he did step down. Considering that we know Saddam Hussein had things like rape rooms, they were listed. It was like, how many of you see the old Batman episodes when they had like the bow and the pam? Adam West ones, remember? It would say evil torture room or something akin to that on the door. 
and you would go into the evil torture room. And of course, the evil torture machine had the label on it. Do you realize Saddam Hussein had rape rooms that were listed in a sign that said rape rooms? Okay, so the man was not a good man. Okay, he really was not somebody we needed to do business with because doing business with these people was simply like doing business with the Nazis. You might as well be Ford. Well, listen to this. In the few weeks before its fall, Iraq's Ba'athist fascist regime, that is Saddam's, made a series of increasingly desperate peace offers to Washington, promising to hold elections and even to allow U.S. troops to search for banned weapons, but the advances were all rejected by the Bush administration, according to a mediaries.